Hey, Marky here. Mark the Demystifier. So if you haven't watched my channel before, or my channels, because I'm on Patreon and on YouTube, then what I do is, as the name would suggest, demystify things. So look at things where maybe people get the wrong idea, where there are misconceptions, or areas that are potentially quite complex that are not explained well. And what I endeavour to do is to explain them clearly in a way that everybody can understand and in a way that busts some of the misconceptions. So today I am going to be demystifying confidence. People talk about confidence all the time. It's a really commonly used word and concept. but. What does it really mean? I'm not sure that people really uh, truly grasp the meaning of confidence. I think it gets blurred with other things. And I think one of the things that it gets blurred with, for example, and I'm getting straight into the subject here, is self-esteem and self-worth. Okay, so people will talk about uh, confident body language or, you know, speaks very confident or sounds very confident, you know, so we imagine somebody, you know, with very open uh, body language, you know, kind of standing quite tall, making good eye contact, uh, in a reasonably loud, clear voice, not hesitant, all those kinds of things. And yeah, that's, you know, that would be a confident presentation. It doesn't mean that you are confident, it just means that you present as confident, but that's, you know, that's good, that's half the battle. If you can, and uh, often um, fake it till you make it, these things help. But people often confuse this with self-esteem, because if you've got low self-esteem, then, you know, there's a likelihood that you're going to be quite passive and your body language is going to be very different. The eye contact isn't going to be so strong, the voice is going to be more faltering, you're going to be more carried and bowed, um, perhaps kind of shrinking body language, that body language that's kind of don't notice me or trying to make yourself small, shoulders hunched, all those kinds of things. So what's confidence and what's self-esteem and where does one begin and the other end off? So let's look at the word confident. That's how it's look, looked at in other contexts, not just in terms of, you know, uh, you know, he appeared or she appeared confident or, you know, what is your confidence like? How confident are you as a person? So you'd use it in another context in, you know, are you confident uh, that the electrician you have employed to rewire your house is qualified and safe? Different meaning, isn't it? Different context. You know, how confident are you that uh, you know that this job will get completed on time? Okay, so confidence is about your belief in something. It's about how confident you are, how sure you are, how reassured, how happy you are that. Uh, somebody is or something is going to do what it says it's going to do. You can be confident in a product. People talk about you know confidence in a product. If you buy um, a medicine, you know, are you confident in that medicine? If you, um, you know, are you confident in the brakes? <laughs> confident of the brakes in your car? You know, will they do what they say they are going to do? So, self confidence then isn't about self esteem. And it might show in the way you're bearing and the way you carry yourself, but actually what confidence means is how sure are you that you can deliver what you are expected to deliver or setting out to deliver. Now that's a very different meaning, isn't it? That's kind of quite interesting. This is where it gets a bit more subtle and nuanced. So, and also situation specific. Because yes, you can have a, a, a general degree of confidence, um, but really confidence is a, is a situation specific thing. So for example, I, um, I'm very confident with public speaking, okay? Um, but I'm not brilliantly confident in social situations, especially being on the autistic spectrum, that puts me at a, Disadvantage. I have learned lots of skills over the years and I can be more confident in some situations than others. So if I've got a role to play, I can be very confident. I can be life and soul of the party, I can be, you know, super host. 
But in some situations where it's just me, I'm just mingling with people, I don't feel very confident. And that's, is that a bad thing? Well, people would tend to think of lack of confidence as always being a bad thing. Actually, sometimes it's a good thing. Let's go back to the electrician analogy. Okay, so if I uh, if I want to see somebody and they ask me to uh, have a look at some of their wiring in their house, well, I have no idea about electrics, so I would I'd have very poor competence in that area, and therefore my confidence I think should match my competence. This is this is what to me is the nutshell. This is what it's all about. Is you don't want to be more confident than you're competent or your competence or as a tongue twister or less confident than your competence your competence and your confidence oh my god uh, should match that's what you know that's something to to aim for so often you know if you're very very good at something and you lack confidence then you know something is awry there there is a mismatch between your self-perception and your ability to do something and that works both ways because overconfidence is an issue so, and one of the things I've discovered is that bad drivers, this is based on research, think they are good drivers. <laughs> often people that are very, and poker players as well, bad poker players often think that they are good poker players. So therefore they've got a confidence which doesn't match their competence. So I think this is a subtle thing, but it, it spins the whole thing on its head, really, because everyone said, oh, you, you know, you should be more confident, build up your confidence in yourself. Well, yes, but maybe it's situation specific. Maybe you have to also build up your competence. And maybe there's some areas where your confidence is too high. So it just looks at it in a little bit more depth, really. What about overall confidence well i guess yeah i guess the your overall confidence is what does that really mean usually what people refer to as overall confidence is probably social confidence it's about how you are with other people okay so it's very specific to your social skills it's not actually maybe as general as people would say so somebody that presents as not being very confident might be incredibly competent in in their field of expertise and you know, I might be incredibly confident in their field of expertise. So, you know, I have somebody that say it's a, a specialist lawyer, you know, you go and see them in their um, consulting room, um, you know, their element, they know their business, it's their area of competence and security. They might be very confident, but in any other situation, the, the social situation, they might appear to lack in confidence, but the, it's situation specific. You know, it may it may appear general to an extent. I think it, I think it can be general. There's a general kind of. Some people are very confident in themselves generally, but they are also people that tend to be very competent in themselves generally. So something to think about there. The confidence is not the same as self-esteem, although the two often go together and the two are overlapped. If you're very competent, then there's a good chance that you will be confident and there's a good chance that you will have a high self-esteem because all these things feed off one another. But it's also to do with self-image and self-belief because our self-image can be a, a huge mismatch with the reality. Um, and that's where therapy comes in. That's often, you know, the therapist job is to help people see their own light to see their own skills and their own ability because often we've been put down by other people so we can be hugely competent but very low self-esteem and low confidence that's where you need to work on improving your confidence by changing some of those beliefs that you've inherited from elsewhere where you're not very confident or you're not very competent for example in specific areas and if you are not very skilled in in social skills then what i would suggest is work on social skills there's ways to do this now there's lots of information available improve your competence and therefore improve your confidence alongside i hope that makes sense i'm going to talk about stress as part of the next one because that's another similar thing where people mix these things up so if you enjoyed this and it made any semblance of sense and it didn't mystify you even more please hit the like button the little thumbs up symbol uh, or if you're watching this on youtube uh, please share this video with your friends and acquaintances people who are lacking in confidence or people who are overconfident and please subscribe and then you become a regular supporter of mine and if you click the uh 
the little bell symbol, then you get updates. So when I produce a new video, you get you're the first one to know. And if you want to really, really help out uh, and be a super supporter, is come and join me over on the other side, which is my Patreon channel. And on my Patreon channel, you can sign up and be a sponsor. You can actually help sponsor this channel. You can help the cause of demystific demystification, yeah. help the cause of elocution and <laughs> demystification throughout the world. So thank you for watching. I'll be back very soon. Rangi Mario.